we just filed a lawsuit that we announced about an agent who evidently went out of control, who at the time was on the personal protective detail of Vice President Kamala Harris. And then you've got like the sort of basic, do they even know how to keep unbalanced people out of the Secret Service? So as I say, we do all this other, you know, we've been looking at the Secret Service for some time, and we just filed a lawsuit that we announced about an agent who evidently went out of control, who at the time was on the personal protective detail of Vice President Kamala Harris. We filed a lawsuit against the Department of Homeland Security, which, run, you know, which is the agency that houses the Secret Service, for records related to an incident at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland in which a Secret Service agent assigned to protect Harris reportedly got into a scuffle with colleagues. Here's what it is. According to an April 24th report by the Washington Examiner, a Secret Service agent was removed from her duties after physically attacking the commanding agent in charge and other agents who tried to subdue her. Think about that. I mean, how, how did that agent get to the position? Was this the first time she did anything weird? I doubt it. I doubt it. A later report states the agents involved in restraining Michelle Herc Zeg, that's the alleged assailant, was especially were especially concerned because she still had her gun in her holster, at least. That was a positive. They wrestled her to the ground, took the gun from her, cuffed her, and then removed her from the terminal. And the reporting following on was Secret Service agents and officers are privately questioning, again, the hiring process and whether the agency had adequately screened Herzig, Herzig, her background. Some also wonder whether her hire was part of a diversity, equity, and inclusion push in response to years of staff shortages that may have required an agency to lower its once strict employment standards and physical performance to reach quotas for female agents and officers. So what this story is telling you is that the Secret Service community, they know what's going on. And they're concerned about what I just said. So I'm on the outside looking in. I've been doing government investigations for nearly 30 years. I know what to look for. I see the documents on the internet from the, own gov from the Secret Service's website. I've been doing this too long to pretend that it doesn't mean what it actually suggests. That they're lowering standards in order to achieve diversity. And they're hiding the records. And we asked for this stuff back in April. We basically want for the records related to the incident. And we go through all the names of the people involved. Training and disciplinary records of the agent at issue. And all Secret Service and DHS, Department of Homeland Security, policy documents related to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the hiring, employment, training, and discipline of Secret Service agents. So on the one hand, you've got this issue of a complete cap collapse in the Secret Service where 130, someone, a shooter, 138 uh, yards away. Is that the, I think that was the length. I mean, according to, to experts, snipers, and you know, people who've had uh, law enforcement and military training. I mean, you don't need to be a sniper to take someone out from 138 yards away. I mean, there are scopes available, obviously, to make it more, make it easier. But, I mean, the military doesn't train snipers at 138 yards. Obviously, they do, but you know what I mean. They, they train much further out. I mean, that's standard Armed firearms training is, I think, 200 yards. They should be, you should be able to shoot 
without a sniper scope. Just incredible. So you've got that complete failure of the security system that the Secret Service, which by the way, has a $3 billion budget. $3 billion budget. As I said earlier this week, that essentially is an infinite budget for protection. Now, not all of it goes to protection, but um, uh, you know, and some, some of the detail is how much is spent on protection, my guess is classified and probably should be. But it, it, it's, it's monopoly money at that point. They can spend anything they need to, practically speaking, to defend their protectees. And it's not just the, the presidents and former presidents. It's in, in the case of the current presidents, their families, in the case of presidential personnel, excuse me, presidential candidates, it's usually their families as well. They finally gave protection to RFK. We've highlighted the corruption there where Meyer Orcus, the head of the DHS, personally denied Kennedy protection. His father had been killed, his uncle had been assassinated. His father, Robert F. Kennedy, his uncle, the former president of the United States, JFK, was murdered and they denied him Secret Service protection. He's running for president. And it's only after this near-death experience of Trump do they back off and retract the vicious, nasty, vindictive decision to deny him protection even though they knew he was facing significant security risks. Prior to the altercation, Herzeg reportedly arrived at Joint Base Andrews and began acting erratically, grabbing another senior agent's personal phone and deleting applications on it, according to two sources familiar with the matter. The other agent, a shift leader, was able to recover his phone and then acted if nothing had happened. So she was acting crazy and her people around her kind of gave her the benefit of the doubt initially. Well, what an awful situation. And as I say in the press release about this lawsuit, the catastrophic security failure behind the attempted assassination of former President Trump shows how the management and quality of Secret Service personnel are urgent issues. The Secret Service's illicit cover-up of these documents about the Kamala Harris protective detail incident is not reassuring, I'd say. So, Say a prayer of Thanksgiving that President Trump was alive, that more people weren't killed or injured. Say prayers for the family of that hero who saved his family and died and was killed doing that. Say prayers for those injured. And, you know, not everyone who was shot, excuse me, not everyone who was injured was shot because people get injured in a traumatic way as a result of being at an incident like that. And of course, you know, the whole country is traumatized by something like that. And I gotta say, you know, uh, on, on the behavior of President Trump, he's a hero. That was an American hero in the way he reacted. And this is not a political comment, it's a straightforward comment about seeing a, a, a citizen and a, a, who, in extreme circumstances, responded in the best possible way to reassure the public. Let's, sh let's play that, let's show that, that picture of him with the flag. The one where he's, oh, we have, oh, there, there. It was a version of that, the fight, fight, fight. Great, just great stuff. And of course, you have that iconic photo of the flag. And of course, the crowd around him, you know, they reacted quite sensibly. Thankfully, they didn't panic. So, you know, the president has said it's by the grace of God. I think God's grace was all over that place, right? Because people could have been injured and otherwise hurt in a panic stampede or something else after the shots took out. You know, they, these were 10 shots or so. And they, and they did not panic and everyone kept their heads about them. And this leads me to the next situation. I mean, because this is a crisis. The president was nearly assassinated. The Secret Service that has been years 
decades supposed to be protecting presidents has been highlighted to be a failure and incapable of doing so. And so there are people who might take advantage of it. So it's a crisis. There's a security crisis right now related to Secret Service. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.